White elephant's shoes is what I'm going to talk about today, Super Soul Sisters. Now, I know this is going to sound really, really out there. It's a touchy one. I'm warning you now. I'm letting you know. <laughs> I'm letting you know in advance, ladies, that this is probably going to push a few buttons for a few people. Because I don't know if it'll push it directly, but indirectly you may be thinking, oh, I don't know if I'm comfortable with putting that pair of shoes on. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I find, I find that a bit too challenging, Ricky. So you may not be ready. And of course, it's your closet. So you can choose what goes in your shoe closet, right? You can have them or not have them. Um, you know, it's your shoes, it's your path, it's your way. Uh, I've always been known, um, as a lot of Zimbabweans and South Africans are, for being quite um, direct. Like, just say it how it is. Like, I am who I am, and I'm unapologetic about it. And if you don't like it, then it's like, well, that's unfortunate for you, isn't it? <laughs> and I would actually like to have more ladies like that, because there is empowerment in that. Because it's like, you're not trying to be everything to everybody. You're not being um, a people pleaser to the point that it, uh, it's at cost to who you truly are, authentically. And um, as long as you're not doing it in an aggressive and unpleasant way, uh, I'm I'm like, why not? You know, what? Why are we not being that way? You know, why are we not being our authentic, true selves and unapologetically so? So I do want more people like this. And one of the things around that is spotting the white elephant in the room and then saying, "Hey, there is a white elephant in the room." And sometimes it's about taboo subjects. So once again, it's not about going in their guns blazing and making things uncomfortable for everybody to the point where they're like, oh my God, I can't, I, you know, this is too much. And I find you aggressive or whatever. It's not, that's, I don't promote that. I'm just going, maybe we need to call out the white elephant when it's there, if there's going to be some underlying benefits so where there is a good intent behind calling out the white elephant great if you're doing it with poor intent then not so great okay so can I clarify on that okay um, a white elephant might be um, okay I'm just sucking an example out of the sky um, somebody says to a guy you know a boy at school says to a girl who's seriously overweight you're overweight heffalump what's you know literally the white elephant you know why don't you address your issue now your weight issue not conducive it's going to be construed as bullying or being unkind to the point where she her self-esteem is going to go right through the floor right and who knows she might actually have a thyroid issue or a genetic disorder or whatever it is it might be that you know there's been some kind of severe trauma which I have come across where they overeat uh, because it's a form of protection you know putting on that extra weight um, so you don't know what's going on and to what end would you say that why would you say that be kind don't put don't put those ugly shoes on you know that's not what I'm talking about the white elephant in the room is when it's like there's something really awkward that nobody's saying so it'll be something like um, and I've had a few scenarios with this. I'll give you an example. And I have to say, this was quite challenging. Um, I did the landmark forum years ago through a friend of mine actually introduced me to it. And I thought, wow, you know, this was one of my starts of my journey. And it was um, in, in the UK. And yeah, so I decided to go along. And anyway, during that, um, those, I think it was a three or four days that we did um, the, the landmark for, it was the first one that we did. There was this really odd girl, like she was eccentric as hell, hey. <laughs> and she was, but to the point where, and I, I always talk about this, and like, like I love eccentric. I think eccentric and different is cool and funky and edgy and entertaining and unique and um, sometimes very creative, quite often very creative. So I love eccentric, but there seems to be like a fine line between eccentricity and being weird. Okay, <laughs> and this is just my personal discovery. I'm just like, there's definitely a line, isn't there? And it's like, at what point do the big go? Uh, you go from being eccentric to actually you're just weird, you're odd, you know, and it's uncomfortable. So people sense that and they want to move away 
from people that are like that don't they they just go you're an oddball you're weird you know i i don't want that in my life so they get shunned and this is what was happening for this girl she was on on the outskirts of society really um she had by being so weird she allowed herself to be well ultimately ostracized she had no friends she was very lonely um and her way of getting attention was by being eccentric and odd like really odd and um making really inappropriate comments and jabs at people like just so that she could get the attention you know it draws the attention and people but it's the wrong attention and so what was it was so uncomfortable because what what the coach or leader did which was really interesting was um he she came up and she started getting pretty weird on stage if i'm honest and uh, she started i can't remember what it was but everyone was like okay this is a very strange girl you know what's going on for her and uh and he said he said what's the benefit of you being so weird and eccentric and honestly all our, our drawers just dropped it's like oh you don't say that like you don't go up and tell people they're weird and odd you know and he's going what is the what's the benefit he said because here's the thing you've ostracized yourself by putting yourself out there as weird and odd and there's a reason for it basically he was looking for what the intention was the positive remember i was saying at um in nlp there's behind every behavior there is a positive intention so her positive intention was remember i was saying um uh you know like with hypochondriacs you remember i was saying with the hypo shoes they 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 learned somewhere in their in their developmental process that by being sick they would get attention they wouldn't get attention if they're well but they got attention if they were sick right so it's like how can you get the attention without having to be sick how can you get the attention that you are needing and obviously craving but without having to be weird but how he did it was quite i found i thought oh my god that's so aggressive <laughs> it's like i can't imagine saying anything like that to somebody and so in, in so publicly in front of everyone and he just went straight to white elephant in the room everybody here thinks that and he actually said who here thinks that she's really quite odd put up your hands now there were probably two or three hundred people in the room and pretty much everybody put up their hands but you could see the hands were only going up like that he's uh, start at the start he was like come on seriously i want her to realize that this is not in her best interest to be this way so how many people in this room think that she's actually odd she's not eccentric so much but she's now crossed that line where she's now weird and odd who here thinks that Put up your hands and i mean you could honestly see the hands they were like like this going up and i was like oh my god this is so uncomfortable and there was like this deathly silence you could actually hear the pin drop and it was it was you could see the look on her face i mean it was whilst it was you know maybe he could have delivered it in a, in a softer way like he was quite a hardener approach he just kind of said it how it was but in that you know in that instance it did actually work so you have to be sensitive to that like i'm not promoting you be insensitive and unkind to people please don't do that you know that's not what i'm about i do not promote that in any way shape or form you know you can you can present it like if it had been me i might have said you know Sweetheart, have you ever thought about the fact, you know, the the need to be so different that people are not attracted to it? Do you think that's working for you? You know, so I would have probably, because of me being a softener person and having my softener shoes on, I would have presented that information in a different way. Uh, but he was the opposite. He was quite an authoritarian kind of guy, but it worked. It did actually work. And she was like, oh, really? Does everyone think that? And and then he said, yeah, no. Nah. He said, now, nah. if we did this differently and you could get attention without you being unusual and odd, do you think you'd be able to, would you give it a crack? And she was like, okay, yeah, actually I would. 
So she had a breakthrough by having the white elephant in the room being pulled out, okay? So, you know, and it's like, say for example, I'm in a meeting and, you know, there is tension, you know, um, and, you know, there's an awkward something that you've got to talk about and you don't, I don't know what it is, but it's just like, okay, I don't really want to talk about this. I'd be going, do you know what? I don't know if anyone else can feel the tension in the room, but I'm feeling pretty tense about this because of X, Y, Z. Is anyone else feeling the same way? And that takes the sting out of what, it, and everybody breathes a sigh of relief because they're not the one who's actually said it. <laughs> You're being the brave one who's actually put on her Xena warrior shoes and gone, okay, I'm going to say it. I'm just going to call it what it is. But how you present it, it's that it's, you know, you've got to have your what and how shoes. You know, how you present it is going to be really key. So I'm, I'm more up instead of that direct approach, unless you're dealing with a very direct person. If you're dealing with, with, um, the internal frame of reference kind of person, not external frame of reference where, you know, they, they softeners and they need the nice way to have things said. If it's an internal frame of reference person who's authoritarian like that guy that, you know, I was just talking about, you could say straight up to him, you know, uh, what's with hardener words, you know, what's this, what's the story, you know, X, Y, Z, you know, and, and you can even how you present it, you know, is like more direct. Whereas, you know, with the, with, you know, generally, I like to go in with more of a softener approach and go, well, you know, um, I'm feeling a bit awkward about this conversation. Is anyone else feeling the same, you know? And people immediately can, will tend to take that on board a lot better with the softener language. So pointing the elephant out in the room is often a game changer because it changes the real thing that needs to be changed. It brings the very big thing that most people are leaving to right to the end of the meeting or right to the end of the discussion or or no, don't do it at all. They go, oh my gosh, I'm still, I still didn't say what I needed to say or it didn't, you know, express the feeling that I needed to express or whatever. They talk about everything but the thing that needs to actually be spoken about. Go straight to it. Go straight off. Be the courageous one and go, okay, I'm going to have my white elephant shoes on. How I'm going to present it, I'm going to be kind and softener in my approach. Uh, a gentle, it's the what and how shoes that you need. And how can I have it where it's going to be with a positive intention that comes out? You know, it's like I'm doing this because, you know, every pe everyone's feeling comfortable and I want people to feel comfortable. So, or you know, whatever it is, the, the positive intention that's sitting behind it. So useful stuff, right? Okay. Um, not everybody will be brave enough to put these shoes on. Maybe you need to have a little bit of practice before you go there. Um, and, you know, once you get into it, you start, they start becoming more comfortable to wear, you know, that's just like, instead of faffing around and wasting time, um, because I'm conscious of my time, um, and I like to get to the point so that we can get onto it straight away. And quite often with sessions, I go straight into it. You know, if I know I'm on the form that you've put on, you know, I have a form that you fill in and you give me your presenting issue. I go straight to the issue. I don't do beating around the bush and all of that malarkey. You know, it's of course, you know, hi, how are you doing? Civility, you know, of course, you know, um, uh, uh, and having a bit of time getting to know the person. But when it actually kicks into it, I don't faff around i get straight to what what it is because i want to shift that as fast as possible for you right that's why you've come to see me so um it's kind of doing that same thing um but in a nice way in a in a kind way and in a soft way so that people will embrace it um and take it on board because they'll want to then change it won't they so i hope you found that useful please like share subscribe and uh, hit the notification bell come and join us in the facebook uh, Vicky Jane group and meet other ladies on the same path as you so it's all about getting you into your shoes on your path going your own way and well done for taking the next step today all right namaste